everyone, Greg Oldson here with the Jasper County Conservation Department. And here in front of me, this is what I refer to sometimes as a tree cookie, uh, which is basically just the cross section of a tree trunk. And what we are going to do today is take a look at the different layers of the tree, uh, talk a little bit more about the growth rings, and also talk about how, how those trees grow. So I want you to think here for a second, imagine that we went out to a tree and took a nail and drove that nail into the trunk of the tree. If we came back 50 or 100 years later, where would that nail be? Now you may think that the nail would be maybe 20 or 30 feet uh, higher than it was when we first put it into the tree, but in fact, it would still be at that same level. Uh, but would it, it would actually be inside of the tree itself. So growth from the trunk actually happens laterally. Uh, the, the tree will actually form more girth as it gets older. The way that vertical growth actually occurs is from the ends of the branches. So uh, the buds on the end of the branches actually store energy inside of there and each year um, throughout the growing period we actually have growth that occurs out the ends of the branches and that's how the trees get taller. Um, so going back to our tree cookie here, let's talk a little bit more about the different layers of the tree. So to start with, um, on the outside here, that would be the bark. Now there's actually two different layers of bark that every tree has. Uh, so you have the outer bark and you have the inner bark or the cork layer. Um, and that basically serves as protection for the trees um, from weather. Um, but the, the downside is that insects can get into that bark um, and could potentially harm the tree. So it does protect, protect the tree, but it also um, could, could cause harm if those insects um, bore into the tree. The next layer uh, that we actually cannot see uh, because it's only a couple of cells wide is the cambium layer. And that layer is very important for the tree because those are the growth cells. The cambium layer actually adds new layers of bark each year and also forms new sapwood. And the sapwood is the next section in and we might be able to take a closer look if we wet down this cross section. So if we take a closer look here, you guys will see that just inside of the, the inner bark layer, there's this lighter section, and then we have these dark and light rings that alternate all the way to the core. So the sapwood contains the xylem and the phloem, so it is responsible for carrying both water and sugar throughout the tree. After the tree goes through photosynthesis, it will produce sugar, which is carried from the, the leaves up in the canopy, down through the tree, and eventually down to the roots in the, the fall where it's stored before it goes dormant. So one of the things that we do in the spring here at Jasper County Conservation is make maple syrup. And this sapwood here on the maple trees is where we drive our taps into to collect the sap to make syrup. So that right there would be the sapwood. And then as we go closer to the center, as we said before, you will see those alternating stripes of dark lines and lighter lines. And those are the growth rings. And um, inside of the sapwood is actually where the heartwood is located. And that is actually dead wood cells. So as the, the sapwood and as the tree continues to grow, the inner sapwood will die off and then we will form new sapwood and new bark um, as that tree gets older. So like we said, if you can see the, the darker lines, that would be during the late fall when the tree is starting to go dormant. It will bundle those cells really closely together and so we know that that's towards the end of the, the growing season. The lighter cells inside of there would be during the spring when that tree is rapidly growing. 
So any tree that grows in a, a temperate climate will have these distinct uh, growth rings that we can use to estimate the, the age of that tree. So I wanted to pull out a different tree cookie to show you guys the difference between the, the heartwood and the sapwood. So you can tell on this piece it's pretty pretty easy to see that this dark darker section towards the middle, that is the heartwood there. And then this is the sapwood, the lighter wood on the, the outside. So there's the difference between those two. The other piece that I wanted to share with you guys, this one's pretty cool. It's covered in epoxy so those rings really stand out. Um, this intersection is the, the pith. Uh, so any cross section of a, a tree trunk or a branch that you look at will have this one little spot in the middle. And the pith is actually the mother cells, the original cells from the tree when it started to grow from seed. Um, and if you look at the pith going down towards the bottom, you can see that the rings are really close together. And then on the top side of the pith, those rings are farther apart and we had more growth that occurred on this side. Now I'm, I'm guessing that this tree cookie maybe came from a limb and the limbs as they grow bigger there will be a lot of weight hanging out from the side of the tree and to prevent those branches from breaking off the tree will actually create more growth cells on the top side of the branch instead of the bottom and by doing that, the tree can actually pull the branch up from the ground, away from the ground, so that it doesn't break off. Uh, so that's one adaptation that trees have used. That way they don't lose all of their branches is by producing more cells on the top side of the branch instead of the bottom to, to hold that branch up. So not only do the growth rings show us how trees have adapted to support their branches, but they also show us the story of that tree's life. So if we take a look at this picture here, in between the two dark lines, if you look closely at the growth rings, you will see that there is a bigger gap in between each year's growth ring. So that would suggest that the growing conditions were suitable for that tree to add on extra layers uh, throughout that period. If you look between the the four different blue lines on this cross section, you'll see that the growth rings are really close together and that might suggest that those were drought years and it was hard for that tree to be able to grow in those conditions. The last thing on this picture, if you take a close look at the yellow lines that are highlighted, those are actually called rays and what those cells do is they help to interlock the growth rings to help support the tree. So kind of like if you were stacking hay bales on a hay rack, you don't put all of the bales in the same direction, so those rays help to interlock the cells to strengthen the tree trunk. So the last thing that I have here for you guys, I actually went out and took some photos of some trees that were cut down this year and one that was cut down a couple of years ago and I counted the growth rings that we were talking about earlier to estimate how old they were and this one right here I actually counted and found out it was 116 years old this one right here was around 160 years old and what I'd like you guys to do is figure out what year those trees started growing and I want you, if you could, leave us a comment down below, uh, something significant that happened in history that year. And I'd kind of be curious to, to find out what you guys found. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we will see you next time.